This past Sunday, the final episode of the hit HBO drama series Succession aired. Four seasons and 40 episodes of watching Kendall, Roman, and Shiv Roy all fight tooth and nail to be the one to take over their father's company. When I first started watching Succession, I was a little unsure about it. Not that the pilot isn't excellent, but the concept of watching countless episodes of people in suits spat out business jargon and oddly specific insults seemed tiresome. Yet somewhere along the way, the Roy family and simultaneously the other characters like Tom and Greg and so many others were able to wiggle their way into my heart. But it's one thing to have a successful show. Plenty of shows have had successful runs, yet not every show, in fact a lot of shows, ultimately fail in one big area, the finale. Plenty of shows, even ones with lackluster final seasons, still had a chance to be remembered fondly, if not for that bitter taste the finale left in its audience's mouth. We've all been there. We're sitting down, watching the finale of a show we've invested countless hours into, spent time with these characters, getting to know them, loving them, hating them, and then loving them again. Just for the final shot to occur, the credits begin to roll, and we're stuck sitting there on our couches mouth wide open before we can utter the words, really? That's it? Between Dexter, How I Met Your Mother, Game of Thrones, and plenty of other series, I'm sure we've all had that one show, that one finale that we know will haunt us to our graves. So the question has to be asked, for as great a succession has been since it aired back in 2018 and all the countless Emmys aside, did the succession finale stick the landing? Long story short, yes! Also, spoilers for those who haven't seen the finale yet, though I don't know why you'd watch this without having seen the finale, that seems odd. Regardless, yes, I believe not only did Succession have a finale that fully satisfied me to my core, I'd go as far as to say this is one of the best series finales ever. Not only did it manage to subvert expectations yet again, but the answer that we've all been wondering, who will in fact be the successor, who will win the show, was answered, and was kind of staring us in the face the entire time. So if you're still here, I'm going to assume you've seen the finale and or you don't care about spoilers. And by now you also probably know that it is indeed none of the Roy children who actually take over their late father's company, but it is in fact Tom Wamsgam who ends up becoming the CEO of the company courtesy of the unexpected and unbelievably entertaining Lucas Matson, played by Alexander Skarsgård. The episode begins where the last episode left off, seemingly as if Shiv Roy, the only daughter of the late Logan Roy, the fiery cutthroat redhead, is the winner. However, it's clear early on that Matson has soured on her and will not be giving her the CEO position. After a brutal family reunion and Shiv being blindsided, the Roy children come together and anoint Ken the man to take the company and continue their father's legacy. After one of my favorite scenes in the series, a meal fit for a king, things are seemingly all perfect and in order for the Roy children. It is soon revealed by the man himself that Tom is in fact the one assuming the role of CEO, a position offered to him seemingly on a whim by Matson. However fully confident they have the numbers and votes, the Roy children walk into the board meeting and the vote ensues. Despite a moment of hesitation, Roman does vote against the deal. However, it is Shiv Roy who ends up stabbing Ken in the back one final time and backs out at the last second, leading to one final Roy children roast session where some of the most brutal and deep-rooted insults are thrown into the mix. Shiv's last minute decision to back out and vote for the deal allows Matson to assume the company, thus making Tom the CEO of Waystar and Royco. The unexpected dark horse, who seemingly lost any chance of victory when Logan Roy died on that airplane, is the ultimate winner in succession. I mean, one could make the case that Matson is the true winner, and of course Stewie wins any scene he's in, but all that being said, Tom Dark Horse Wamsgam isn't exactly such an unexpected successor. See, I can't help but think about how the show is structured. Four seasons, and if you follow the theory that in each of the first three seasons, one of the Roy children had the best chance to succeed, Ken in season one, Shiv in season two, and Roman in season three, three main characters, one character per season, then who's the main character for the fourth season? See, each season of the show ends with one of the Roy children losing. In season 1, Kendall screws up the bear hug by accidentally killing the waiter. In season 2, Shiv is primed to take over but ultimately loses by the end of the season and they lose out on the Pierce deal. And even in the third season, it seems like Roman is being sculpted to take over, yet the rug is pulled from him as well. The only character other than Logan who wins at the end of a season is Tom. At the end of season 3, realizing what he has a chance to do, Tom betrays Shiv and chooses Logan over her. 
Even before season 4, Tom is the only character to have really ended a season with a true victory. Sure, you can make the case that Kendall wins at the end of season 2, but he backs out of the fight he started fairly quickly in season 3. See, all of us assumed that Tom was a lost cause because, as Carl pointed out, the only person who liked Tom, that being Logan, was dead. Tom spends most of the season trying to scrounge up any sense of assistance possible, offering his services to anyone who will lend an ear. But the show is structured so perfectly, I can't help but think it was intentional all along. If you think about the show in terms of main characters, who do you have? Kendall, Shiv, Roman, and up until episode 3 of season 4, you had Logan. Each of our three main characters have already lost, and our fourth is dead, so who does that leave us? Well, for all of his faults, Roman points out one glaring issue with all three Roy children. They're all bullshit. They're rich, spoiled kids who never had to work for anything in their life. Tom? Tom is Logan in a nutshell. A man who came from nothing, worked his way up, fought tooth and nail. And Tom is a killer. Not in the way Kendall is, but a killer in the business sense. I think back to when Logan told Ken that he wasn't a killer. He didn't have that killer instinct. It took Logan dying for Ken to start acting like his father. Whereas before he was even dead, Tom was willing to betray his own wife to get ahead. It was always Tom. It was never going to be one of the kids. Instead, it was the man who played his cards right, who waited in the shadows and struck when the time was necessary. A man who rose to power through sheer will. In the end, we got a 1 hour and 30 minute grand spectacle of a finale, filled to the brim with emotion, drama, comedy, intrigue, and intensity. The succession finale stuck the landing, and will be remembered as one of the greatest series finales of all time, and one of the greatest shows of all time. Well guys, thanks for watching the video. Let me know what you thought of the succession finale. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Where do you rate it all time in the conversation of best shows? I think it might be top five for me. Also, what finale has hurt you the most? I'd probably have to say Game of Thrones. That one really stung and, you know, still hurts to this day. And as always, if you guys liked the video, make sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more from me, and click the little bell notification so you get notified when I post new content. And as always, I will see you guys on the next video.